This is the first lecture of chapter 9 about chemical bonds and uh, physical and chemical reactions. So we're going to start off talking about physical and chemical properties and physical and chemical change before we get into actually talking about bonds. So first thing is to talk about what physical properties are. So physical properties just are talking about the physical things about a substance. So it describes the look or the feel of a substance. And it can be an element like what we have here with gold or diamonds. So with gold, it's going to describe that it's an opaque substance, so we can't see through it, versus a diamond, which is transparent, so we can see through it. Um, it's going to describe things like color, um, it's going to describe how hard it is, um, the density, uh, the texture, the phase that it's in at, say, room temperature. So you can see here, this is giving us the phase at 25 degrees Celsius. Um, all kinds of physical information about that substance. Now, like I said, it can be about an element, but it can also be about a compound like water. So um, we can also describe um, compounds where we combine elements together. And the thing is, is that the physical properties can change when the condition changes, but it's still the same substance. So for example, when you heat gold, it will no longer be a solid, but it will remain the same element. So when you heat it up and it melts, it will be liquid, but it will still have the same pro kinds of properties. It'll still conduct electricity and so on. So then related to physical properties is physical change. So physical change is a change in the physical properties. So the best known physical change that you're aware of is related to water. So you've got uh, ice and we go from the solid ice version to liquid, the water version of this material. And then you get another physical change when we go from liquid to the gas version when we add heat again. So the thing is with physical changes, physical changes can be reversed by changing the conditions. So if you stop heating, the water, that steam will eventually condense and turn back into water. If, for example, you um, cool the water back down farther, it will revert back to its solid state. So the big thing with a physical change is that physical changes are reversible. So you can go back to a different physical property by reversing or changing the conditions that altered that property in the first place. The kind of other side of the properties are chemical properties. So chemical properties are uh, describing the tendency of a substance to transform into new substances. Um, in another way you could say this would be to react with other substances to create new substances. So we've got some examples here. So if you've used um, a stove or a uh, grill that uses uh, natural gas or propane, what you're doing is you're taking that natural gas um, or propane, so natural gas is mostly methane um, or propane, and reacting it with oxygen with a little bit of energy and you're going to form new substances, carbon dioxide and water in this case. Um, I'm sure everybody's done a baking soda volcano where you take baking soda plus vinegar and those react to make, again, actually carbon dioxide and water. So you're making new substances out of those original two. And these kinds of statues that you've seen that have this greenish hue to them, these are actually copper statues. So you're familiar with what copper looks like, but if copper reacts with carbon dioxide and water, it actually creates this new substance that we call patina. It's copper oxide, um, and so it gives it this greenish hue to it. 
So chemical properties are just describing the tendency of substances to do this. Um, so tied to that, just like with chemi or with physical properties, we've got chemical properties, or I'm sorry, chemical changes. Um, so chemical change is the result of a chemical reaction um, between two or more substances. And so what we're, we're looking at here is the reaction between methane and oxygen. And what happens is during a chemical reaction, you get those two or more substances reacting the atoms get rearranged and make those new substances. And so you can see we've got our oxygen atoms, they get split apart, as well as the carbon and hydrogen atoms with the methane, everybody gets split apart during that reaction, and they rearrange themselves into water molecules and carbon dioxide. So we get new substances here at the end. Um, and if you notice, same number of everybody, so we still have four oxygen, a carbon, and four hydrogens, but in a new arrangement to make those new substances. And the new substances are going to have different properties from the original materials that we started with. So, for example, we know water is very different from methane or oxygen as far as what it can do. Same with carbon dioxide because, for example, we breathe in oxygen to use it in our body processes and we breathe out carbon dioxide because um, we make that as a waste product. So those two have very different um, properties even though they're both gases. So then the question is, how do you tell if a change is a physical change or a chemical change? Because sometimes it can be difficult to look at it and see, say, well, that's a physical change, that's a chemical change, because both of these cause changes in the physical appearance of the material. Right, so chemical change is going to make new materials, um, but a physical change is going to change what the material looks like. So the big difference is physical changes you can undo by restoring those original conditions. So if you if the temperature is changed, um, if you change it back, does it go back? You know, if you've added water, if you take the water away, does the material go back to what it was originally? Chemical changes don't do this. So, for example, this car that we've got here, this car has undergone a chemical change. So it has started to rust. Um, the thing is, is that you can't undo the rust if you think about it that way. So the rust is permanent. Now you can remove the rust but you have to actually remove the rust. You can't just remove the oxygen and have it, you know, undo itself. So you have to actually physically remove the rust from the car, but you're removing the iron oxide, that new substance that has been formed over time to create that um, chemical change. So if we take a look at these pictures, keep moving myself around. Um, we've got two reactions. If you take a look at these, these are test tubes with two different materials. And the same thing has happened to these. So they both start off at a cool temperature and then they get heated and then cooled back down. And so what I want you to do is take a look at these and see if you can figure out if they are a chemical change or a physical change for that material. And I will make sure that the answer is posted in the PowerPoint, um, but you want to be able to tell, is it a physical change or a chemical change and why? 
I also am going to post a link to another video that's going to actually walk you through some demonstrations on physical and chemical change. Go into this in a little more detail for anybody who may be a little still confused or want to see more demonstrations of these differences between chemical and physical change uh, because I'm actually going to have you do a lab activity um, looking at physical and chemical changes. So a little bit of review of terms because you will be using these terms on and off through the next couple of chapters. So um, atoms, we've seen atoms before. Again, that's the smallest unit of an element. So we can have helium atoms and oxygen atoms. Helium, those can stand alone because they are in those noble gases, so they can be by themselves. Um, but we can have, for example, you can see over here, hydrogen atoms bonded to oxygen atoms. So they can, like I said, exist alone or with others of the same element. So we have oxygen atoms bound together here or in combination with other elements. So if we have them in combination with other elements, we call that a compound. I mentioned that actually, I think a little while ago, when I said, was talking about water. Um, so compounds are just substances made up of a combination of elements. So if you have two or more elements bound together, that makes a compound. So water, carbon dioxide, um, I'm sorry, I thought I had some examples here. Uh, sugar, I mean, most of the materials that you see every day and talk about every day are going to be compounds because they are made up of these combinations of elements. The last term that we come across um, commonly is molecules. Um, and molecules are just the smallest particle of a compound or a gas element. So um, for all of the gas elements except for the noble gases, um, they are going to be made up of molecules because they're going to come in sets. So again, helium and the other noble gases like neon and so forth can travel as single atoms, but the other gases are going to have to travel in sets, whether it's two or three atom, or atoms bound together. So those are molecules. But we can also talk about molecules like a molecule of water. So this is also, um, we've got the compound of water, which is the combination of these different elements, but an individual molecule is that set of those atoms working together as an individual small particle of that compound. So that molecule has to contain all of the parts of that, for example, compound, because it has to have the chemical properties. So it needs to be able, for example, to undergo a chemical reaction. So it has to contain all of the atoms that would be in that compound. So that's what that last part means, that it still must retain chemical characteristic properties for that material. All right, I'm going to stop here for this lecture and pick up talking about chemical formulas in the next one. So we'll see you then.